All right, hello and welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss, and this is the first of three podcasts that I'm going to produce um, dealing with Earth's atmosphere. And so we'll be talking in this podcast about the significance of the atmosphere. So first of all, um, you know, the atmosphere major significance is that it keeps the temperature of the Earth very moderate. So the the hottest hot and the coldest cold, it, yeah, it, it could be drastic to us, but it's it's really not that bad as compared to we'll compare other planets in our solar system their differences that they see, and so one of the things we'll talk about is the greenhouse effect. Not a bad thing, in terms of you know we need the greenhouse effect. What what is the greenhouse effect? Well, the greenhouse effect, a greenhouse uh, on the left here is basically just showing that you know sunlight coming in from the from the sun here is going to stream down and enter the greenhouse and then when it when it hits the surface and it is absorbed it's no it's been changed and so it's no longer uh, sunlight and it's a, it's a heat uh, different type of energy and that that heat energy just cannot escape it just keeps bouncing around because um, it, it it was able to enter through the glass but once in there it has become trapped and so the greenhouse can maintain a nice warm temperature um, even though it's a lot colder outside. So what does that look like for our atmosphere? Well, it's the same type of thing. So sunlight coming through the atmosphere does the same type of thing. It comes through, it is able to enter, and then once it strikes the surface, it's been changed, and it's, it's no longer the same type of energy, and so it's, it's redirected back to the planet if it contacts greenhouse gas. And we'll talk later about what greenhouse gases are. Um, you know, but for now, we'll just we'll just say that greenhouse gases cause the greenhouse effect, which is one of the major reasons why our, our planet's temperature is moderated between day and night, and so on. All right, so we also see that the atmosphere actually moves. You know, the, the air actually moves from one place to another on the planet, and in doing so, um, warm air is, which form mostly at the equator. Warm air from the equator um, rises and is able to direct toward the poles, um, also moderating the, the Earth's climate because you don't have as cold of a polar region because air is able to move from the equators to the poles. All right, well, so let's just briefly compare two planets. Uh, we'll, we'll compare Mercury to Earth. All right, well, Earth, talk about first, uh, the coldest it gets on this planet is negative 70 degrees Celsius. Now, oh, that's really cold, um, but, you know, the, and the warmest it gets is 55 degrees Celsius. So the difference between negative 70 and 55 is 125 degrees Celsius. All right, so pretty drastic, but let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. All right, well, the coldest Mercury gets is a negative 180. Wait a minute. That's colder than the negative 70 of the Earth. It actually gets colder in the dark on Mercury than it does in the dark or night on Earth. So Mercury closer to the sun but gets colder. Mercury also gets a lot hotter, obviously, being closer to the sun. So these scorching differences give you a, a, a 610 degree Celsius difference between day and night. That's that's insane, right? There's no way that could support life. Just just way too too much of a difference between day and night. Well, Mercury lacks an atmosphere. Well, without an atmosphere, you wouldn't be able to hear me, all right? So the atmosphere is required. You need particles, or air particles, for sound to travel. So transmit, transmit of sound uh, is another benefit of the atmosphere. Okay, this is more of a test than anything, but in this box here, you should be able to see if this is all working. Um, kind of a, just a image visual of sound waves traveling through atmosphere and so you can kind of see the the colliding of the particles together and the waves that are formed um, as sound waves travel through the air all right without the atmosphere we wouldn't have the water cycle you know water cycle is basically you know water is evaporating from oceans lakes streams evapotranspiration from plants and that the water is part of the atmosphere water vapor is actually a greenhouse gas and it you know coming to come down as precipitation so water cycle happens in the atmosphere We'll talk more about this when we talk about the stratosphere, but there is a, a layer in the stratosphere where there's a high concentration of ozone, or O3, and what that really does is that just allows 
some radiation to get through, but ozone also has a pretty good job at knocking out a lot of ultraviolet radiation that would be harmful to our bodies. And so that's our this is our last slide of the atmosphere. And just to point out that as you go up into the atmosphere, pressure and density both go down until eventually you get to outer space and there's no atmosphere left.